it on waiters. GGI, and she go full Right up there, they want this to the top. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode on the follow through. We're going to dive into Romantic Education Street. We got a good amount of questions, um, and we realized after doing some brainstorming and, and, and just making our little like Pareto analysis and chart, as we like to call it, um, that this might be a very long episode. So we decided to focus on one aspect of of these questions. And primarily, we got a lot of questions from women, but this will cater to, to both sexes. And it's really about, you know, uh, you know, how do you know when you're going to move in with somebody? And what are the things that you should consider before moving w- with with your boyfriend and girlfriend? Now, the important the, the important thing to consider here, not apologies there, the, the important thing to consider here is that you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, okay? And because if you're like one of those people, like, oh, I have a partner. You know what a partner is? You know, we've become such a cupcake society that that we have diminished the value of the meaning of relationships. And it's why so many people in this day and age, you know, while they're fucking a lot on Tinder and Bumble, and I think more men are sexually, are sexually satisfied than women, um, because a lot of women are still craving, you know, more of that intimacy and the beautiful things that come with a relationship. And the problem is when you brainwash people for, you know, like a decade and saying, oh, you shouldn't use the term boyfriend or girlfriend. You should use the term partner. What ends up happening, unfortunately, is that your relationship is like in this weird phase where it never, let's say, evolves out of dating. And you're not really a boyfriend and girlfriend, which would then lead into something more serious eventually, which is marriage, you know, Um, you're kind of like in purgatory of relationships. Like you'd be be better off just dating than to kind of be in this thing of like, oh, you know, that's my partner. No, dude, if you fucking love that person, that's your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, it it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like what's so hard to say, hey, that's my girlfriend or that's my boyfriend, you know, partner is like, you know what a partner would be like? You have a boyfriend or girlfriend and you're just one of those magical Italian couples who has an amante on the side, which literally translates to the lover, right? And maybe you don't want to say lover because like America is so weird. You know, or like we freak out about like a little nipple showing on Janet Jackson like 15 years ago or nudity. But then we're obsessed with like OnlyFans and weird uh, like incest porn, literally on Pornhub. Everything is about like how my stepdaddy banged me. I don't get it whatever I'm to all say Kira, right? But anyways, like, you know, you're like, oh, I don't want to say that's our lover. So you'd be like, oh, that's my partner, right? So anyways, I think before you want to move into somebody, right, uh, make sure that you are in an established relationship. Um, So let's dive into this. As we said, a lot of questions came from women, but this applies, you know, for men as well. And literally the first question is, how do you know when you're ready to move into someone? Well, you know, I think for everyone, that's going to be a little different and not diving too deep into different cultural contexts for people who are like Iranian and Middle Eastern and, and, and those who come from, you know, uh, the Asian uh, subcontinent. You know, I think if you're like 18 years old, you really shouldn't move in with anybody. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a man or, 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 or a young woman. Really embrace your youth. Really embrace your space of freedom. Um, really, I mean... Your space is your freedom. Like, really enjoy that. Enjoy being with your family because um, you, will, you will regret not being with them at some point. Um, I would even say, like, for most people in their 20s, you don't really need to move in with anybody because, you know, the problem is, like, when you move in with every single boyfriend you have, you're never going to embrace solitude and and being lonely and really learning how to be happy alone. You know, your relationship really doesn't go through the proper evolutionary process. You know, I think definitely with your age, when you're younger, really enjoy just being by yourself, like having your own space, you know, really embrace that. Because if you can't learn to do that, when you move into somebody, you know, the quote unquote emotional baggage that you bring into that person's house will follow you. And that's not good because you're going to fuck up the chi of that place 
so bad. Like, you know, there's that feng shui that everyone's all like obsessed about now. I mean, you will really mess that up. You know, like I think you should move in with somebody when you're mentally in a very good place, when you feel very secure and confident that on your worst day, you can come home and you are going to be ecstatic to see your boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay. I think, you know, if you're in college, dude, don't even move in with nobody. If you're in a university, don't move in with anybody. Enjoy being in the dorms your first year. Enjoy having your apartments. You know, for most of us in California, we've got to seek apartments, you know, our second year in university. I think other universities, you get to have dorms like all year round. Um, I could be wrong now, but, you know, enjoy, you know, having your apartment your second year, maybe with like your roommate, right? And in your third year, you know, maybe you have your own space because maybe you're a little bit smarter and you save more money and you don't want to have roommates anymore. I mean, in, enjoy those processes. Enjoy those adventures. So if you're in university, don't even think about moving with somebody. You guys and gals should really embrace those moments with one, like those moments of just being a fun, vivacious, goofy, goofball, energetic, adventurous college student, university student. You really should. Um, I think as you get into your mid-20s, like 25 and above, it just really depends where you are in life and where you are in your, in, in your relationship. Um, if you've been dating somebody for like four years, so say you started at 21 years of age, you are now 25 years old. I should say you're a young woman because it'll be better if we go with specifics here. And let's just say your boyfriend or a girlfriend, doesn't matter, right? In this case, I guess we will loosely use the term partner. But, you know, your boyfriend and girlfriend, whoever it is, let's just say they're 26 to 30 years of age. You two have been to each other for four years. And you two are both ready to move on to the next phase of your relationship, which is like you really want to get married and potentially start a family. I think at that point, it can be appropriate to want to move in with your boyfriend and girlfriend, okay? Um, and there's a, there's a little bit of a science romantically behind that because, you know, we've had some friends who, when they got married, they never lived with each other. And I always would bust their balls on this. I'd be like, so who's the messy one? And they would be like, how do you know Master Shake? I'd be like, because I went through that with, with my own wife. And she's Korean. And people think like Koreans and you know, Korean people are like very clean because if you go to Korea, like they're very tidy, very organized. She's kind of like a hurricane when she first, you know, stay at my place. And uh, I'm like, you know, I got to at least luckily solve the messiness early before I moved in and, you know, started, you know, my marriage. And they're like, oh my God, like, you know, and, and, and you know what? Men, you're going to be surprised. You know, we, we get a lot of shit for being messy, but out of all of our friends, most of our friends who've gotten married, the women have typically been the fucking messy ones. I mean, I was talking about like hurricane F5 effect in the house. Like where clothes are everywhere, you know, they're not cleaning up. So, so even to our young compatriots who might be in junior high and high school, if they tell you women are cleaner, they're full of shit. So they're not, they're, they're pretty messy. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say all women are messy, but I'm just saying in our experience, the the funny and 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 irony to it is that the funny thing and and the the ironic the ironic part to it is that a lot of the the wives were messier. So, you know, I think you know, as as we said, like you're about to get married, right? Like you're you're you you are like engaged, like you know you're going to get engaged, you know you're going to get married, you want to start a family. I think at that point, it's good to have that conversation, like, hey, we should move in with each other. Because you want to get used to each other's uh, tendencies and on, you know, and on your happy days, it's great. But you two don't experience what it's like where like from the morning you get up, like let's say one of you is in a very shitty mood and then you come home and you're still in a shitty mood. You know, that is a bit of immaturity in that person in your relationship. And what you have to learn is that when you wake up and you're in a shitty mood, you have to realize why you're with this person because you don't want to make them feel upset. And you have to compartmentalize that shittiness to a different sector of your brain. And that when you're with this individual, you're utterly happy. And when you go out of the house and you come back, 
whatever garbage there was, you leave it at the door. You leave it even more specifically at your workplace door. You do not bring that stuff home and that we can enjoy your time. So these are things you get to practice with one another. You know, um, I think otherwise, if you're in your 20s and you're dating, I think really enjoy your space. Maybe like, you know, you know, maybe as like for fun, maybe on the weekends, you guys spend time with each other. OK. Um, and, you know, it, it's I think as you as your relationship evolves and you get into that like we're going to get engaged and married and, and potentially start a family, you know, it's important around that time to move in because the thing is, is like when you're going out with one another and like even on your worst day, right, you know you're going to get laid at the end of the night because you're going to go see your boyfriend or girlfriend. The dynamics are very different. You're like, oh, dude, I've had a terrible day, but I'm going to go get laid tonight. Like I'm going to go have some amazing sex. I'm going to have fun. We're going to be in the fucking bathtub with bubbles and shit. Like, you're going to have a great time. And even if they sleep over that night, it's very different than living with the other person. Because things, it's the atmosphere changes. It's because cause subconsciously, you know that, let's say your day was very bad. Let's say your boss yelled at you and called you like a complete dimwit, right? And someone cut you off in a 405 for you in LA and they flicked you off and you're like, you cut me off, why are you fl-? right? You're like, you're like, you cut me off, why are you flicking me off? So this... Right, this bad energy is gone. But then you're like, you know, you, you, on your Apple CarPlay, you get a text message, like, you know, and it says, "Hey, check out my photo." And you're like, damn, like she's wearing that tonight. Okay, cool. I know what's gonna happen. You're gonna be very ecstatic. And even if they spend the night over, they're not staying there until the next day. They're they're usually leaving when you leave work, right? So that environment is very different than like you come home, and let's say you don't have sex because you are living with one another, and now you're mad. One of you is mad. Maybe both of you are mad because you don't communicate that well, right? And then the next day comes. And then, like, you're still maybe upset. It's very different. So that's, that's why it's important around that higher stage of your relationship to move in because you get to work on these things with one another, you know? Um, this is a very important question. You know, should the way uh, my parents feel about living uh, together before marriage matter? Like, how much should it matter? So I think once again, this comes with age. I think if you're not engaged and you are not going to get married and like you're in your, let's say above the age of 18, what your parents feel should definitely matter. And I really say that from a world context point of view. I I know for us living in America, um, you know, the culture here has really changed substantially quick. You know, Americans, for the most part, these things did matter to them. I would say definitely like in the Middle West and, and, and in the South, where there is a bit more culture left um, and a lot more family values left. You know, I, I think for those people, it, it's still very vibrant, uh, you know, about how your parents feel. But for a lot of, you know, a lot of other people for the most of the country, especially in the West and East Coast, I think these things are a lot more lackadaisical unfortunately, and because of certain programming that's been taking place with society, um, people have been kind of trained to not respect what their parents say. So from a world point of view, I could tell you from as an Iranian, you know, who's, you know, oldest calendar is close to 8,000 years. You're talking about an old fucking race. It's important. China, same way. Korea, Japan. I would say these things are, are quite important. Um, I would even say for my Italian friends, th- these things are quite important up until like a certain age. Once again, like when you're 18, dude, respect your parents. Okay. Cause if you can't respect them, you will never respect your boyfriend or girlfriend ever. It starts with their parents first. Okay. How they feel about the, about you two living with each other should matter. Um, you know, and I would say even if you're like 24, 25, 26, 27, I think, I think whether you're, you're a man or a woman, like if your relationship ain't going anywhere and your parents are voicing their criticism, just respect it. You know, I think, you know, I think honestly, like once you're above the age of 27, 28, regardless if you're a man or a woman, you know, at that point, you're a well-molded adult. I hope we see a lot of cupcake adults, which is quite a shame now in the United States. But I think at that point, you can have a nice conversation with your parents. Like, look, like I'm 30 years old, you know, I want to live with so-and-so, I know it goes against your wishes, 
but I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. I would like to live with this person. I want to experience it. You know, just have a nice conversation. Um, I think the people who are going to have the hardest are like, I think Iranian parents are cool. Once your kids like hit 30, they go, ah, fuck, they're 30 years old. Like they're not married yet. Right. They, they kind of like become a little bit more lenient, except for maybe in Iran back in the homeland. I think for a lot of, um, m- like more traditional, let's say Middle Eastern and specifically Muslim people, because like people forget the biggest, the largest population of Muslims is not in the Arab world. It is in Southeast Asia people. So, um, I think for those people, and once again, there's a lot of cultural elements too. If you're a woman, it's going to be very hard to, um, tell your parents, I want to go live with my boyfriend. Like, like culturally, it's going to be difficult. And also if they're a little bit more religious, it's going to be difficult. So once again, though, I think it's going to come down to talking with your parents saying, Hey, look, I'm 30 years old. I'm not 16. I'm not 18. You know, I went to university. I graduated. I make my own money. Like I want to experience this, you know? So definitely have that talk with them. Um, and you know, once again, you know, how much, how much it should matter. You know, we, we kind of answer that. Like the younger you are, the more it's going to get, the more it's going to matter. The, the older you are, the less it's going to matter because now you're a more established adult where you can make better decisions in life. Um, so I hope that really answered that aspect of the question. If it didn't, dude, just you guys leave us comments. We'll, we will really follow up on it, you know? Um, here's a good one. It's, you know, best questions to ask before making huge decisions like moving in together. Well, you know, she, so she, so this, um, uh, uh, person, she actually even put in parentheses, like, well, maybe not questions, but figure out, you know, who's the messy one first. Ah, that's kind of funny. Okay. So, you know, best, best questions to ask before making huge decisions like moving in together. Honestly, like you can ask so many freaking questions, but it's one of those things where you're going to sink or swim. It, it's kind of like this, like, I don't know if anyone has ridden a surfboard before, but your first time riding a surfboard or a boogie board, like, well, boogie board is a little bit easier. Okay. But surfboard, you can like ask a lot of questions but they do nothing to prepare you for the first time you try to stand on a surfboard. This is one of those moments in life where like you are literally getting on the bicycle and the training wheels are off and you're like, we're about to fucking fall and this is going to hurt. So you just got to dive into it. I think important questions maybe to ask is like, if the two of you have very different work schedules is to figure out what time, like each of you likes to go to bed. And if it's a big deal, if the other person doesn't come to bed at that time, because for some people dude, like they really want to wind down at the end of the night. They want to relax. They want to meditate. They, you know, maybe they don't want to go to bed at fucking 8 PM. Cause like which poor miserable soul wants to go to bed at 8 PM, like every single night. I mean, my friends in Italy don't go to bed till like two, three in the morning and somehow they're getting up at six and they're like fully energetic. God bless them. Right. Must be the great food out there. Any amount of like just passionate, romantic lovemaking and, and just intimacy and sex they have just keeps them going, right? Um, better than coffee, proven fact. Um, so I think that's important. I think the messy one, right? Like you will figure out who the messy one is and before you snap each other with claws and go for one another's necks, have a very civilized conversation with one another. Like, hey, like... You know, you'd be like, look, Jamsheet, I don't really like it when you leave your cereal bowl out the whole fucking day and then you eat another cereal bowl and now they're piling up on top of each other and you haven't even rinsed them out. Like, can you at least rinse them out and put them in the kitchen sink and I'll take care of that, you know? I think things like that about the messy one popping up, like, just have a nice conversation. Um... I think something important, you know, maybe this is something very important is your view on pets. Um, you know, lately pets have become more of a fashion item, which is why small dogs have been like uh, gaining in mass popularity, even though to me they're not a dog. And I, I do not apologize if I offend anyone. A dog to me is like a German shepherd or a wolf. Has to be above knee height specifically, like in your peripheral vision. 
if it's if the dog is this big, that's a hamster and a rabbit having sex. People, that's not a dog anymore. Like really, it isn't. But anyways, you know, small dogs have become come more of a commodity. It's like a fashion statement, like much like you know this suit or like the watch. You know, it's it's people have small dogs, and then unfortunately, they put small dogs in homes because hawks will come and eat them in the daytime, and owls and and rats will eat them at nighttime. Um, See how you feel about it. Because I'll tell you this. If you're a person who's never had an animal inside the house and you start living with somebody who likes to have animals inside the house, your house will fucking smell. It smells a lot. I don't care what people say. Um, smells. Especially when they take a shit somewhere. It's going to smell. Okay? Um, so I think those things are important. Um if one of you smokes, right, that's going to be an issue because their clothes will always smell. And if they vape, that's even fucking worse because now you can't smell it. But all those harmful uh, 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 metals that get released are now stuck everywhere in your house. And when your air conditioner blows or the wind blows, right? So, I mean, these are things to ask. Like, hey, do you vape? Do you smoke? Okay, if you do, you got to do it outside all the fucking time. Don't do it inside because I don't want to die. And then if you don't want to die, maybe you shouldn't date that person. Just saying. Um, you know, I think that's something important. Um, let's see what else. You guys should ask, do any of you know how to cook? Because who the fuck wants to live with somebody if they don't know how to cook food? Like, that's a turnoff. Sorry to say it, but if your idea of cooking is throwing something in the microwave... It's not a good way to move in with somebody. You guys are going to have some problems. Trust me. You really will. Especially if both of you are working and you're coming home late. Dude, cooking is something beautiful. Okay? I think that's something uh, that in California people do not appreciate. And, and fuck, in New York, I don't think they appreciate it because they always want to go out, you know? Um, but I'll tell you, some of my best experiences in life with, with women I've dated is coming home and they're just, I mean, and they want to tease me. Like, they're in some cute fucking underwear and they're cooking food and and I join them and we're cooking together and you know what yeah it's a little erotic but guess what I don't regret it and you should experience it because cooking is good for your soul in every way when you cook you shouldn't view it as a chore dude you should view it as something beautiful it gets your mind off of things it allows you to connect with your boyfriend and girlfriend much more intimately. And who doesn't want to have some, you know, passionate kitchen romance? I mean, who does not want to have kitchen sex? Just being honest. And if you haven't, you're lame. You really are. Like, you should really experience those things. Um, so I think that, that that's, that's another important question to ask. Um, otherwise, you know, just get ready for... For, for everything that life throws at you when you move in with somebody. And the two of you just should be calm, be respectful when you don't see eye to eye on things. And just, you know, roll with the punches. Roll with the river, right? You don't, you don't fight a river going upstream. You just see where it kind of takes you and, and you adapt to, you know, the turn and, and the meandering and, and, you know, the elevation changes. Otherwise, you're, you're going you're gonna to You're going to sink right? This is a sink or swim situation. So you want to keep swimming. Um, so I think that's important. Now, ironically, you know, we weren't going to answer this question, but because moving in with somebody usually leads up to marriage, we're going to talk about marriage um, real quickly because we got a couple questions about marriage. And, and the question is, you know, look, like, how do I know I'm going to marry somebody? Like, I can barely think about getting married a month from now let alone what I'm going to do as a job for the rest of my life. How am I supposed to think I can marry this person? Also, is it bad if I can't think about that right now? Okay, we're going to have to break this up into a little bit, okay? So, look, if you're 18 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, man, woman, don't worry about it if you can't think about marriage, honestly. Enjoy your youthhood enjoy being in a meaningful relationship with somebody, but don't feel the pressure of marriage, okay? Um, I'm going to say this, though. If you think 
if you say, how am I supposed to think I can marry this person? You are with the wrong person. I'm just going to tell you that flat out right now. Um, and Liz Kalashadi, um, you know, who's also known as Dear Lizzie K, um, she's a therapist, graduated from Columbia, and she'll tell you that as well. Like with a lot of the relationship work that we do on the side, um, if those are the thoughts that you're having, you, I hate to say it, leave that person. Because what we've seen is that when people are like, like, fuck, like how, how am I supposed to marry this person? They're a, a fucking blob, you know? Like when they marry them, those are the people who have a lot of marital issues because there's a lot of like anger and guilt already in the relationship and has not been resolved and unresolved problems only get worse by the magnitude of 10 to the power of whatever you want to name it, okay? Honestly, if those are thoughts you're having, you should leave that person. Now, let me be a little bit more specific. There's a difference in going like, like, you know, for example, like, I love Fahda, right? Like, I love this girl. And, and I can't marry her today, but I can see myself marrying her five years from now or three years from now. That is a very different approach to like, like going from, how am I supposed to marry this fucking person? Like, I can't see myself marrying this person at all. If those are your thoughts, you really need to get out of that relationship. That means intuitively, your soul is speaking to you, telling you, look, maybe this person was great in bed, but that's all they got. And God knows how long that will last for. We're better off ending this relationship and moving on with our life. Okay. I've kind of answered the last part of this person's question, which is like, also, is it bad if I can't think about marriage right now? No, it's not bad. You know, like, look, if you're 18 to 25, I don't think it's bad at all. I think as you get older, it just matters where you are in life. Now, I will say something, and some people may disagree or agree, but I'm going to go based upon science and facts. I think as a woman, it really depends where you are, okay, um, and what you want to have in life. If you want to have kids in life, I think as a woman, and this is a problem in America because we've given this great lie towards women that, like, you can have kids whenever you want. You can't, okay? You can go to any OBGYN, and they'll tell you, like, look, your best years of childbearing are literally from 18 to 35. And the unfortunate thing is that while, yes, we all look better than we ever have in the course of humanity, biology is biology. After the age of 35, miscarriage increases for a woman, and so do issues with proper fetal development and having a healthy baby. And that's a sad fact. It really is. And I speak from a very personal um, journey and trying to have kids with my wife because we've had two miscarriages and, and it's, it's very fucking painful, okay? And that'll be a separate conversation. But if you want to have a kid as a woman, I think you should really value your time and who you go out with tremendously. I think at some point, you're going to have to put your foot down and be like, like I'm not going to, I'm going to stop dating these fucking loser men or guys, because men are not losers, but guys. Guys are a bunch of losers. You know why? Because guys are a hybrid between a boy and a man. They never evolved. They got stuck just like being like this teen and maybe pre-puberty. They didn't even hit puberty yet. You know, they are a hybrid. And the problem with the hybrid is it has, it has no purpose in life. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be, you know? So like a hybrid car, they're not that fun for the most part, you know? Like, do you see, when you see people drive a Toyota Prius, they're not fucking happy, they're miserable. You know, put them in an M3 BMW, very happy, you know why? Purpose-built car. Man, purpose-built human, okay? He knows what he wants, and he's not going to waste your time there. So, um, So if you're trying to have kids, I think really value your dating life and and at some point okay you're gonna have to start thinking about marriage and from 30 and above i think every person that you date you really got to make sure that within the first i want to say 90 days to six months that intuitively you feel that this is someone that you want to go out with now when you're 30 you have more time but let's say you're 34 
you know, you have some good years of, of, of childbirth, even though 35 is technically the like cutoff where, where most OBs and, and, and just about medicine in general says after the age of 35, the risk of miscarriage, the risk of, of having a child with certain issues uh, being born greatly increases. You want to take that into account. You know, because you want to then try to have a kid, you know, 36, 37 or 38, you know, after 40, everything is high risk and and things become a lot more complicated. Right. So really value it, you know. Um, But when you're young, like I said, 18, it doesn't matter. Right. But if you're trying to have kids, I think you should really be strategic as to who you want to go out with and don't be an asshole because, you know, we've met a lot of a lot of young women who were hot as shit when they're 25 and now they're like 42 and they're fucking single and they are depressed because they can't have kids, right? I mean, some of them, their doctors have flat out told them you cannot have kids, okay? It's very fucking sad. And their dating pool has really um, diminished because the men that they kind of gave the middle finger to all got married and have kids or they're just married, you know? And now that the men they're going after they, for the most part, don't want to have kids because they're, you know, they're older. They're like 48 or 50, you know. Um, I'm not saying all of them don't want to have kids, but a lot of them don't. So it comes down to age, you know. So really, really pay attention to what you're doing. If you're 30 years old and you're still just fucking around, I don't care, man or woman, you got to start growing up, okay. Unless, like, look, unless if you're like, you know what, I don't want to get married, I don't want to have kids, then dude, Go be a top five person to date on Tinder. You're doing a wonderful thing there because you are at least telling people you do not want to get married and you don't want to have kids. For those people, nothing matters, right? Like, it, then, hey, dude, go enjoy dating. Go enjoy having your boyfriends and girlfriends. Really enjoy it, you know? But if, as a young woman, you really want to have children and a family, I think as you get closer to 30, really start being strategic as to who you're going out with and don't really settle, you know, like don't feel like you're making like a drastic sacrifice, right? Make sure the person you go out with is someone that you can envision being with, you know, long-term. It's someone that supports you and your vision. And even if they don't come from that background, like let's say you want a mansion, but they're like, I've always been cool with a one bedroom apartment, but you're like, no, look here, Jamshid, I want a fucking mansion. Like, that's the type of aspirations I have for myself. And Jamshid goes, that's cool. I'll support you. Let's do that. That's great, you know. But if but if they can't support your vision, you're going to have issues. I think for men, like, it once again, it comes down to what you want. I think, you know, if you're 20 years old, dude, don't worry about it. Don't worry about marriage, man. Get your degree, right? Focus on your career. Focus on you. Grow up. Mature. Um, take time to get married. You know, men have a little bit more leeway with marriage. It sucks. I didn't write the rules, but guess what? On this planet, those are the rules that were given to us for all species, okay? Um, I think as a man, if you're serious about marriage, I think as you hit 30, start being strategic as well. Um, You know, see who you want to go out with, see who you can form your relationships with, and don't waste anyone's time. I think my biggest issue is a lot of you know, young guys is they waste a lot of people's times because they just want to get laid. And that's not fair to you and the other person. It is not fair at all. You know, if you're if you're a young man who does not give a fuck about marriage and kids, then by all means, like I said, go on Tinder, be a top five person to date. Let people know that you're doing everyone a justice because they know who to call on the Thursday through Sunday night. They, they, they know who to hit up, okay? Um, but... If you're serious about marriage and having kids, I think, you know, let's say from the time like you're 27, if things in your life are going in a good direction, you can start considering it, right? If like, if I had to give you a, like a starting point, right? Because everyone's going to be different. I I have, I I knew people got married at 26. I knew people got married at 36. Um, it, It just depends where you are in life. But, but there are certain mechanisms to your dating and relationship building that you should consider, let's say, as a young man at the age of 27, right? Or, you know, it's see where you are. And that way you can build your relationships and you can build the foundation to having good relationships, right? Not every relationship is going to end in marriage. Some relationships, you're going to have these 
beautiful relationships for both men and women. You can have beautiful relationships, but that's all they are. They, they don't evolve into the higher phases of marriage, you know, and that's okay. You know what? You use that as a beautiful learning experience so that you can eventually find, you know, a person that will really make you happy like that, you know, um, before I got married, there maybe not every woman I dated was going to be marriage material. Just saying, you know, there may be a couple that really I was like, wow, this has the potential to be a great marriage. It really did. You know, they didn't work out. I got my wife. It still all worked out, you know. And I think that's that's the important thing. Like, don't be bummed out if like the next person you date, you guys don't get married. Use that as a good experience to learn from it, evolve, mature, and it, it allows you to really see what you want in a relationship. You know, what are the important things? You know, what are the things that you're willing to sacrifice and what are the things you are not willing to sacrifice? Apologies, we had to take a little water break. So I think that's, that's important, you know? And this is important because it relates to moving in, right? Because if you can't see yourself marrying that person, then don't waste your time and move in with them because that's, that's like a pseudo marriage. And now you're bringing all this garbage into your, into your pseudo marriage and you're going to have a very miserable uh, um, relationship where now you fucking hate the person, but you're living with them. And like m many couples in America, people are so afraid to leave one another. I mean, it's so heartbreaking. You hear people like commit suicide over a relationship because... They were they didn't have the balls to say like, hey, look, this isn't working out. Like it's best for us to leave. I mean, it's just so sad that that is what we have succumbed to as a society that we've just lost that. I guess you can say a bit of honor. There's honor relationship when you can go up to somebody face to face, and you know you can tell them, you know you can tell them, look, we we made a great run. I do not think this is going to work out. I think it's best if we separate and just go our own ways. You know, and you be civil about it, you know? That takes a lot of courage, and I think that's what's lacking. And it's just so sad when you hear that, right? So don't move in with somebody if you're like, how the hell am I supposed to even marry this person? Because, because that shows there's a lot of issues in that relationship already that are not good at all. Um, so anyways, to recap, you know, how do you know you're, gonna, you're ready to move in with somebody? If you're young, don't sweat it. Enjoy your freedom. Enjoy your space. Enjoy being a goofball. You know, as you get older, you have some more meaningful relationships. You know, let's say after the age of 25, 27, you know, especially for women, I think, you know, after the age of 25, hey, if you're ready to move in, do it. You know, don't worry so much about your parents when you're older, when you're younger for both men and women. Really respect your parents because if you can't respect your parents, just saying this, you will not respect your, your boyfriend or girlfriend and future, uh, you know, husband or wife. Um, and when you're ready to move in with somebody, you know, have a nice talk with your parents if it is culturally against their beliefs, you know, because many of us are the children of many worlds. And because of that, we navigate in this weird gray area of hanging on to the cultural values from the homeland and also growing up, let's say, in America or even for our friends in Europe or Australia or other parts of the world, you know. And it could be reversed. Maybe for some people, like they come from a place like America and they're living in Japan, which is a lot more conservative uh, to a certain degree. And now you got to navigate it differently, right? So have that conversation later on in life. But when you're young, respect your folks. When you're 30 years old, just have a nice adult conversation. I, I guarantee you, they will respect you, you know? And with respect to marriage, you know, you'll know when you're ready to move into somebody, especially as you're a little bit older, man or woman, right? You will know you're ready to move in somebody when you view that, like, wow, this is someone I'm going to get engaged to. I can see myself marrying them, and I can see myself having a family with them. That's when you know you're, you're going to be ready for marriage. You know? And then that's when it's going to be important to move in with that person so that you guys can figure out who the mess you want is to see maybe who you know, farts a lot after dinner. Eh, right? Like You want to you hash those things out because maybe sometimes you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend will not like it if after dinner... They're trying to go look sexy and you just rip like the world's loudest fart and it makes the window shake. That Caltrans thinks there's a fucking earthquake going on. Everyone's boners will go away, you know? Um, so it's important 
then to move in because then you get to learn each other's nuances. You learn more importantly that on a very bad day, you leave all your baggage at work and outside the door, very far away from the entrance of your house. So the moment you come in, the two of you can be happy and respectful to each other and just have a great fucking time with one, with one another. So having said that, I hope all of you enjoyed this amazing episode of our romantic, uh, 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 our romantic street of education street. Um, please remember to click subscribe, follow us on YouTube or on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, many other podcasting, uh, 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 hosting sites as well. And, um, and tell your friends about us. We really appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you soon. Thank you.